Good morning. Today's video presentation, we will discuss on decompressive craniectomy, mainly for large uh, cerebral infarct, and we will focus mainly on the, both the surgical and nursing management. The presenter is Dr. Vincent Ng. He is a consultant from neurosurgery from NNI, and the co-presenter is Ms. Lee Ka Kyo. She's a nurse clinician, also from Department of Surgery uh, from NNI. The lecture outline today, we will talk about the purpose of decompressive craniectomy in stroke management. The focus really is will be on the large malignant MCA infarct or middle cerebral artery infarct. We will discuss the various criteria for early decompressive craniectomy. Subsequently, Ms. Lee will then discuss about the various nursing care issues that concern with decompressive craniectomy. What is malignant cerebral infarction? When patients develop large vessel occlusion, usually from atrial fibrillation, the middle cerebral artery can be infarcted from embolic clots from the heart or develop vessel dissection, mainly affecting the middle cerebral artery territory. It can happen on both right and left side. When such major artery is affected during ischemic stroke, there will be a large cerebral volume that is affected. On top of the ongoing cerebral ischemia and infarction that lead to decrease in neurological deficit, subsequent swelling also may predispose the patient to herniation. As such, this condition traditionally has very high mortality at about 80%. If the patient did not undergo thrombectomy or failed RTPA treatment to open up the middle cerebral artery, then the patient may sustain a large cerebral infarct. The color literature is that perhaps doing a large decompressed craniectomy to open up the skull may allow the cerebrum to have space to swell and to decrease the risk of herniation. Herniation itself is life-threatening and can also lead to early demise of the patient on top of the large territory infarct. As such, by opening the skull, you allow outward herniation of the cerebral uh, volume out of the skull rather than towards the brain stem and therefore causing foramen ha ha magnum herniation or transtentorial herniation. When we look at the evidence, there was a discussion previously whether this group of patients who has now sustained a large cerebral infarct, whether they would be suitable to go for a fairly moderate neurosurgical procedure such as decompressive craniectomy. The literature now knows and proves that early decompressive craniectomy, usually within 48 hours, may be beneficial to the patient. If you look at the video slide in front of you, there is a meta-analysis of three randomized control trial, the decimal trial, the destiny trial, the Hamlet trial, with a total number of patients of 93, reach the age ranging between 80 to 60, with a large left MCA single territory infarction. Decompressive craniectomy was performed within 48 hours of stroke, and the evidence shows that there is definitely reduction in mortality, although there may be, it does not show that there's an increase in the number of severely disabled survivors, and therefore the number of intention to treat is two for survival for patients with MRS less than four. In the updated meta-analysis of Destiny, Decimal, and Hamlet trial, with the total number at n equals to 108, there was also a non-significant benefit of decompressive craniectomy with favorable outcome defined as MRS less than 3. Of course, not all patients with large cerebral infarct area in the middle cerebral artery may benefit from the early decompressive craniectomy. It is important, therefore, to also look at the inclusion and the exclusion criteria for this group of patients. In general, Patients with abysmal prognosis, such as when their pupils are fixed and dilated, 
with serious comorbidity that increases their risk for decompressive craniectomy. When the Glasgow Coma Scale at presentation is very low at less than 6, or the overall life expectancy is less than 3, they may be unsuitable to consider for early prophylactic decompressive craniectomy. For patients less than 48 hours of presentation of stroke, where the MCA territory is significant, i.e. that it is more than half of the MCA territory on imaging, and patients who have pre-morbid good functional status, or the NHS scale is 1A, then we should consider early decompressive craniectomy. Based on the evidence, this inclusion and exclusion criteria are for patients with a single, single MCA territory infarction. For patients with two territory infarcts, in, that means the combination of MCA and anterior cerebral artery infarction, they are not in the protocol. However, it will be a case-by-case -case, uh, basis on discussion between the neurosurgeons, the neurologists, and the family members whether they would prefer to proceed on with the decompressive craniectomy. It is important to inform family members regarding the complications that can occur potentially during a prophylactic early decompressive craniectomy. Complications usually would include, for example, worsening of post-op hemorrhage, infection of the wound, or intracranial infection due to the surgery itself. There's possibility of a CSF leakage. We also perhaps also can consider the additional surgery that will be required after the patient recovers from the decompressive craniectomy and the MCA territory stroke, where we then have to call in the complications or the indications associated with the cranioplasty operation later. In general, 1 in 10 patients undergoing decompressive craniectomy may suffer a complication necessitating additional medical or neurosurgical intervention. As in any brain surgery, vital signs and neurological status monitoring are critical to detect complications. Perform wound care per the hospital protocol. Monitor early signs of wound infection. Hair washing is possible, especially when the stitches and stapler are removed. Pay particular attention at the edge of the groove. That is where poor hair hygiene always happens, and that can actually increase the risk of infection when the patient is due for craniopathy. Educate patient and family members what is normal and abnormal, depending on the patient preferences, religious, uh, advise them on the disposal and collection of scar bone if the bone is not put back into the body. It is normal for the scar without bone to sunken when the brain relaxes. Avoid pressure on the bone fret. May consider applying a known pressure dressing over it to alert the healthcare worker. If the brain are uh, bulged up like this, it is abnormal and you should report to the doctor. The take-home message is early decompressive craniectomy has been shown to reduce mortality in malignant MCA infarction. However, efficacy of decompressive craniectomy on functional outcome remains inconclusive. Thank you.